Coast Guard grant that ABYC received to do a uh, what was called an in-water shock mitigation uh, hazard mitigation strategies. And a lot of the information uh, in this presentation is derived from that. A situation is created, a hazard that we don't normally find on land. Uh, you know, a person would not normally consider connecting AC power to an electric device and then climbing into a swimming pool with it, but that's similar to the situation that occurs or can occur when we plug a boat into shore power a bit later. Um, another case history here, um, two dogs jumped in the water from the owner's boat and were observed to be in great distress. The wife jumps in to help the dogs and her herself is in immediate distress. The husband jumps in to save the wife and both of them drown. Uh, these were actually two uh, partners, they were police officers and uh, another real sad story. Rescuers felt a strong electric shocking sensations as they approached the victims and could not get there until the power was turned off. A faulty light switch and a missing ground on a nearby house was determined to be the cause. Both the dogs survived. This is one of those fixtures that uh, used to be quite prevalent in boats, and I don't see them anymore, but they had both AC and DC uh, uh, lights in them. So you could, if you're plugged into shore power, you could use the AC, or when you weren't, the DC. Particular um, situation is something that happens only in fresh water. And, and perhaps brackish water. Um, it's a freshwater problem. And it, that is because of we have such low conductivity in fresh water. And that low conductivity causes when electricity and current is put in the water, it creates these voltage gradients. They, they develop uh, reaching out from the source. The other thing that makes this worse for us is that the human body's salinity is precisely the same as ancient oceans. In other words, we're about the same as salt water, which makes us far more conductive than the water around us. So the bad news is, is we become a conductor, a better conductor than anything else around us, and then we bridge those voltage gradients in the water. And two volts per foot is what is considered lethal. The cause, the conditions necessary to create a in-the-water shock hazard are easily understood uh, and they apply to both the dock and the boat. Um, there are two general electrical faults necessary. First, we have to have some sort of fault. In the case of my son, of course, that was that, that uh, DC conductor that melted into the insulation of the hot AC conductor and, and flooded the, the DC system with AC. And of course, second, and, and the one that is consistent throughout every one of these accidents is a lack or failure of the AC safety ground. That is the one thing in all of these cases that I know of that is consistent. And it's carrying that fault current off the boat and back to the transformer where it goes. But we also, as soon as we have this fault, we also have a parallel path through the water. It's just not very significant because we have a fantastic path back here. But what happens when we break the safety ground? Now, all of the current, the only path that it has is through the water and back up to the transformer that way. So now we have created uh, running through the body while immersed in fresh water with significant force to cause skeletal muscular paralysis, rendering the victim unable to help him or herself in the drowning and drowning as the eventual result. Now, ESD or electric shock drowning has become a catch-all phrase that kind of encompasses all in water shock casualties and fatalities. Um, the reality is that the higher levels of AC current can result in electrocution, like in the case of my son and, and, and many of the cases. I shouldn't say many, a few of the cases. I think my son's case is the only one that's been 100% documented that this was absolutely an electrocution and not a drowning. Uh, his heart stopped uh, uh, fairly, I, I would say, instantly, instantly. So there's really three different mechanisms uh, of mortality for ESD or electric shock drowning. We have a voltage gradient in the water in sufficient force to cause skeletal paralysis and therefore drowning, ending up with death. That's one. 
The second would be a voltage gradient sufficient enough to actually cause electrocution and stop the heart. And the other is direct contact. Um, voltage gradient, you, it, there's no contact. All we're doing is bridging the different voltages within the water and being the conductor. It's like being a, a copper wire on a battery. And the direct contact is where someone comes in and actually grabs a hold of an energized uh, uh, device or product, electrocution being the result, and death. So I need to make that distinction because there's three different mechanisms. We're talking about milliamps. In fact, if you look at this chart here, um, we, as we get up into the uh, between 100 and 200 milliamps, we're just getting up into the range that we can light up a, a 60 watt light bulb. But take a look at this here: one to three milliamps. We can we can feel that. That's perception. 10 to 20, the loss of voluntary muscle control. This is where people are being paralyzed. 10 to 20 milliamps. 18 to 22, paralysis of the diaphragm and chest muscles. 50 to 65, heart fibrillation can become fatal if, we're, if you're in that gradient for too long. Time is a critical factor. 100 plus is deadly. Death can occur within a very few seconds. And of course, 200 plus is cardiac immobilization, immobilization or instant cardiac death. And it is between these two that I think, uh, you know, where my son was hit, between 100 and 200 milliamps. Again, that's not even enough power to hardly light up a 60-watt light bulb. And I should say that uh, it takes when we clamp it and we get a reading. Well, that means that what is going in is not coming back out. Okay, And where is it going? Ask yourself on a boat, where could it possibly be going? Well, voltage measured across two given points at a set distance apart. For in-water use measurement with the multimeter set to AC volts, the closer and more parallel the probe is in direction of the AC source, the greater the voltage gradient will be. Voltage gradients diminish as the probe moves away from the source. And a potentially lethal voltage gradient has been established at 2 volts per foot. Uh, this voltage will push 12 milliamps of AC current through the body, potentially inducing muscular paralysis. And for these vessels out here have the potential of creating this problem. And so people often ask me, well, how about these boats out here? I mean, if they have a, a generator or an inverter, um, these things can create a problem too. But let me ask you this and remind you about this point. AC has to go back, or any current has to go back to its source. Where's the source if this boat right here has a generator on board? Well, it's the generator. Or an inverter. It's the inverter. Why would electricity go outside the boat to come back in? That It just makes it safe. Now, all of these boats over here, of course, have the potential. And there is a circumstance where we could have, for example, in, a, in, a, in an actual case down in Sacramento on the Delta, where we had two vessels um, out in fresh water anchored together and one of the boats was having issues with its electrical system, so the other boat threw them an extension cord and plugged in. And uh, this is where things can go awry, because where's the source when we have two boats side by side? One of them plugged into the other. It's the one boat. In this particular case, the uh, dinghy broke loose. And one, there was three couples on board. And one of the guys said, I'll get it. He jumps in the water. He, the minute he hits the water, he's instantly in peril. His two friends jump right in to help him out right then and there. And now we've got three adult males in the water, all of them being paralyzed. Fortunately, the wife of one of these men had been at um, a yacht club meeting where they'd actually heard about uh, my story about Lucas and uh, the weekend before, actually. And she had the presence of mind to yank that cord out and saved all three of those guys' lives. So. Right here, we do have a potential. If we have vessels that are sharing electricity back and forth, then there's a potential there. But otherwise, these are pretty...